Hi, it's Hazel. Welcome to my channel. This is a bit of a catch-up video. Uh, oh, sorry, I forgot to turn some lights on. The, um, of course, it's uh, the Defemember uh, thing that Barbara and Louisa are have put together. And <laughs> early on, it's easy enough to fall behind. So, um... Anyway, I just wanted to try to do bring up to date on what I did yesterday, uh, I mean day two, and then um, kind of show you live um, day three, and goodness only knows what today is going to bring. I haven't even watched their videos. <coughs> so, um, as you know, I haven't done anything with the cover. This is just a tiny Reader's Digest book, and it, um, I don't know, I guess it's proving to be, I don't know, a blessing or a challenge. Who knows? Maybe that differs from day to day. Uh, I did want to say that I believe that uh, Louisa and Barbara are raising the bar considerably, and um, it's something to aspire to, uh, and I'm sure they're doing, they've spent a lot more time prepping their uh, thing apparently they had their first meeting in May, so <laughs> I doubt that they're doing this day by day. <coughs> um, this gives us, the rest of us, the opportunity to practice not comparing ourselves. Uh, we can aspire to the people we admire and keep learning new tech te techniques, keep practicing, keep doing, but ultimately. Um, if we compare ourselves, we'll never, we'll never move forward. So, um, can I just show you this guy? I hope you can see him. Uh, as I said, the book is rather small. So, I didn't uh, buy digitals or anything for this. So this, let me see what you can see. So I guess you can just barely see the top of his head. I'll have to move this around a bit. Um, <clears throat> so let me just recap. So this was just a dictionary page. So I used Wild Honey and I think it was Antique Bronze um, Distress Ink Spray um, to give a bit of background and cover the page. Now I... For my card, I used Paw Patrol <laughs> because that seemed to be a good size. Uh, I Oh, looks like I did end up cutting it down because it was a little too long. Um, I used, uh, I decoupaged some giraffe print uh, napkins onto the, to the card. Now, <laughs> this ribbon was quite nice when I put it on. It had a faint yellow... Um, what you may call it, stripes running through it, or plaid, I guess. But um, once I did this, uh, uh, what do you call them, spatters, um, that, of course, absorbed the the ink. And and I don't know if you can... Oh, yeah. Um, I used walnut, because I wanted something darker, or as a wipe, I used walnut stain... Um, re-inker and that's pretty intense I um, there's a limit to what I can have sorry plugged in around me so I took the card the pocket uh, over to my um, my dr uh, not dryer but uh, heat gun and thought I had done you know, sped up the drying a bit, but um, it, I don't know, maybe it's going to take days to do it, who knows. It's still shiny as far as I can see. I did then use my fingers and sort of just blot it a bit to create a higher concentration of color. Um, these are working hands, people. <coughs> Anyway, okay, back to this giraffe. I fussy cut him out of a um, a really gorgeous book that I have. 
it's either German or maybe a Dutch or something like that. Uh, in another video, I'll, I'll actually show you the cover. I don't have it handy. Anyway, I covered them up. And of course, with those with that long scrawny neck and those spindly little legs, he needed to be backed. So I used craft uh, cardstock. And frankly, if anyone would have ever told me that I'd be making a necklace for a giraffe, I would have said, you know, give your head a shake. I just love the idea that, well, I guess no one will ever see this guy but me, that someone could theoretically be writing down those, writing something down those legs and tail. So uh, this is, I'm calling this done for day two, which was splatters and a playing card. Now, oh, I should say that when, when I had splatters, Brits this and I probably used maybe too much ink, too much water, and it too was, you know, soaking in. Oh, clear gesso. I had done clear gesso before I even did that because I was sure the paper would uh, disintegrate otherwise. So then when the, it was taking forever to air dry, I just smooshed these two pages together and that's how I ended up with this nice coloration on the facing page. I also had I tried my best to keep the ink away from this ditch here, this gutter, but it did get through, so I won't be surprised if there is ink elsewhere in the book that migrated there. But, um, you know, that's okay. Uh, this is a work in progress. Okay, so this, um, oh, and this was the card that was the freebie. I should, okay, maybe I should talk about that now, too. I don't know whether you can tell or not. I did do a bit of highlighting around this to sort of ground this guy. And, you know, everybody talks about Stabilo All um, 8046 pencils. And I don't know, this one doesn't have a marking on it, but that's obviously what it is. Um, when I was uh, taking art classes, another one that we used was 808008 and this is more like a, a gray so for those of you that find the black like a little too harsh a bit too much that could be an option so it's 8008 and I don't even remember buying this that's how long ago this was but these are also aquarelle um stabilo pencils um like a navy blue, 8041, red, 8040. Uh, these also were bought, uh, were made in the Czech Republic, so I wonder if that's still the case. And it says paper, glass, plastic, and metal. <clears throat> I have a white one. Now, again, there'd be a very, uh, you know, probably limited use for that one, 8052, and a green one. 8043. And I just wanted, oh, I was using the back of a very important piece of paper. And I made the marks with each of the pencils. I oh, can't do white. <clears throat> And then, of course, the black. So the way I was taught to um, to use this is, uh, can you see? Anyway, I just have a tiny dollar store palette here. I'd spritz some water. It looks like it's not particularly clean. Um, and basically, should have a. I'll use this, I guess. So. Basically, we were taught wet the brush and then sort of drag the, you know, drag it out as far as you would like to. Um, so that's the black, 8046. The gray is obviously lighter. The red could be really nice in the right application. Uh, 
that's the green. And again, it takes a little bit of working at some of these things. Look how pretty the blue is. And the other, th the other way to use any of these pencils is to, uh, let me pick a different, let me pick the blue one, is to simply wet the point and then, you know, any line that you draw will already have that, that sort of, you know, bleeding effect. And this is, this is just, you know, this paper isn't any good. It's just, you know, scratch paper. So again, you can just wet the tip and use your pencils that way. So now that I've found these, maybe I'll be using them more often. Anyway, I just wanted to point that out. Okay, so uh, day three, let me see, we're still, yeah. Day three, the prompt is bright colors and journaling card. Now I don't have an issue with bright colors, so that's a good thing. Um, I'm, well, I have to move forward. Now, I was trying to figure out what page. I thought that uh, using this, um, I thought that using this um, a shorthand book with the blue background might have been, might be a good option, simply because there's already some color there. I won't have to do too much to the background, probably. Uh, it might have been a good idea to think this through before I turn the camera on. Um, anyway, I'll just show you a couple other things before we get into it. In or when I was spritzing uh, the giraffe page, whoops, oh dear, his snout got caught. Um, I used a piece of wax paper behind and uh, just to prevent overspray. And underneath and covering my whole desk was this uh, bit that I cut off a uh, plastic tablecloth. So it's lightweight, it's, it's water resistant, uh, and it's, you know, a neutral color, and it's easy enough to work with. So, okay, let me show you. Okay, we'll get rid of this guy for the time being. I hope that's not going to be an issue. Or did his feet get stuck in the... Okay, let's get this out. Oh, <laughs> sorry, I was showing you this. Uh, center of the signature. Color, color on both pages. Oh, I see where I put that guy. So, of course, penguin to me means cold and frigid and ice and the colors that uh, that you know obviously bring that to mind are blue a cool color like blue oh I forgot to tell you I these I have a, a set of these napkin rings that I got at a thrift store and I'm deconstructing them and that's why I had that little section this is a bigger section why I had that little section of uh, well, I don't know if they're, they're not really sequins, I guess, that I could use for the giraffe's necklace. Anyway, okay, let's get rid of this book. There's a pocket here, which is good for putting the um, journaling card in. So, I, again, I'll say it, I don't have a pause button on this phone. So, I wanted to do as much of the thought process and some of the prep before turning on the camera. So this loosely is what I am considering. This penguin is also out of that book. Maybe that's German. I chose, I looked through some of my decor magazines and I chose this light fixture for him to sit on. And I attached it simply because I had too many pieces that I was trying to work with all at the same time. As I flipped through the magazine, there was a paint swatch, but of course that color there is kind of a pain in the you-know-where. This was just a scrap of paper. I ripped this off it. Um, 
like to have repeating elements. This, of course, came out of uh, a spread on bathrooms. And I like the idea. <laughs> Again, if we're, if we're giving these guys human qualities, why can't he be looking in a mirror? So I've got that. Um, these are a couple versions off a tray that they were using to stage something or other. So, oh, and my substrate here is <laughs> dirty. It's an index card, an oversized index card, one of the four by sixes. Uh, four by three, six, yeah, four by sixes. <clears throat> So this paper I've had for a long time. Again, it's sort of, it's got some texture when you rip it. It has the silver and gold running through it. Um, I guess I wish there was more silver on this particular side. But okay, we know that collage is all, well, it's the art of placement, isn't it? So it's important to be able to do these things in the right order. Now, again, just to make my life a little bit easier, let me bring in this thing to glue on. Um, I'm going to glue this circle down just enough to cover up those words. And you know that I like having elements bleed off the edge of the page. So I've got that. So this will go somewhere here. Now everything so, uh, okay, right now the decision up here would be what is going to be on top of what. And I'm thinking I probably hmm. yeah, that's kind of high contrast. So I'm going to position this bit next so that the this, um, ceramic tile from the bathroom will cover it up. So basically I'm just going to go as far over as, and again, if I have to trim a little bit off the edge, that's okay. I can see that I will have to trim the top anyway. Okay, so then we've got the mirror and the back and the wall. I know that I want, okay, this and this are repeating. This and this are going to repeat. Um, the bronzy finish around the mirror sort of picks up on those colors in the light fixture. And of course, there's white running through this. So I want his beak to sort of be over the, you know, intersecting with the mirror. I want this tray under this wall. So let's do that. Now basically I'm just going to, it's a case of positioning. Do you want to, you, you don't want to, I would not dare say, you don't want to create any awkward little things. If I put it up that high, this would be kind of a bizarre thing. So I'm going to put it kind of right there. And I guess in a sense, it's too bad that nice torn edge is going to be covered, but oh well. So I hope that, uh, that you are well and uh, have gotten over the shock of it being December already. Um, I know it's kind of thrown me for a loop.
and hopefully you're taking part in December Ember or some other um, challenge. Or and and it's not that there's anything so miraculous about these challenges. It's just a way to to sort of force a person to you know <laughs> be challenged on a regular basis. I think it's easy, and I have certainly I haven't been at this as long as some people. I think it's very easy to fall into a rut and to, you know, just uh, default to our comfort level, those elements and colors and, and processes that we like doing best. And um, let's just cut this off and see where we are. And, uh, you know, and life is good. But aren't these fingernails supposed to help? Okay, so now the, the question is positioning. You know, if it's... So let's figure this out. We don't want to, because this is just, you know, very thin paper. Don't want his tail extending beyond the edge of the card. Although I suppose that would be kind of cute if he was... Anyway, can't do that. So I'm going to have this, um, maybe a bit of his tail could come off. I'm going to have it about there, uh, as close to the bottom as possible for his little hassock. And about there. So where do we want this? Do we want it high enough to intersect with those stripes? There's probably some value in doing it there simply because it take it uh, increases the distance between these two things. If it was any lower, it gets kind of close. It, with this intersection of patterns, so we've got the tile, this background, these two colors, the stripes, all kind of right around his head, which is the focal point. So I think I can comfortably put that there. I'm going to leave that about an eighth of an inch from there. And we can get on with it. Is that about an eighth of an inch? that right? Wait, 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 wait. Or was it from the stripe? Good grief. That guy's gonna sit there. That guy's gonna sit. Okay, it was from the stripe, not from the bottom of the piece. And I chose to use, to be working on the striped side of the index card um, because I thought, well, the pattern is there if uh, it shows. And and if it doesn't, well, that's fine too. I think the top is going to need to be trimmed because I see some white there. Okay, I think I'm ready to put this guy down. Now, in the other uh, prompts in the book, I've used both the, the actual prompt. Didn't cut that out very straight. And the animal's name. So, whoopsie. Um, I'll, I think I'll continue with that tra tradition. Okay, let's get some glue on this guy and get this done. Okay, I said I want those tail feathers 
that one on board here. Oh, bad as B. You didn't see that though, thank goodness. And if you say that you did, I'll deny it. Okay. What I'll do is slam my arm stick to the The only corner rounder I have is this one. So of course this is the one that I love the most. I didn't pull out any ink, but what I probably will do is ink it with, uh, I think it's called denim or something. Or maybe a darker color just to ground it a bit more. But let's just pretend that we're ready to put this in here. Not, not much of that blue shows. I do, I did want him to be on the right facing side because I don't like when people or animals, anything that can see, is looking outside. So if he were here, he'd be looking outside of the book. Whereas on this side, he, we, he, we, are wondering what he's looking at. So it would take our eye across the way as well. I think that there's certainly, we met the match here as far as um, the bright color goes. I should have selected some ribbon. Oh, brother, do I have anything? Oops, appropriate here. Oh, I know what I was going to do. Almost forgot. I was going to put a scarf around his neck. These are sewn. I can snip that. Damn it. Oh, sorry. I guess I shouldn't say that. Why didn't I... Remember that before I glued him down. It would have been so much more believable if the um, ribbon was going around, like all around his neck, as opposed to just. Okay, let's see. That's the groan of disappointment, people, in case you've never heard it before. I suppose I could cut it along the back of his neck. side look like. We have to have kind of a sharp angle. Now to make this believable, it's going to go up a little higher. This has to Okay, note to self, if you're ever making a scarf for a penguin, do it in the right order, damn it. Hmm. So this one is going to be on top, so I better figure this bottom one out. I guess if I twisted it... Oh, 
Okay, if I twisted it back on itself, that would look more believable than a scarf sticking out like a flag. Or does it? Maybe it has to be tighter to his body because a scarf would be pretty well going straight down, not. But then this should be down too. Or do I glue the downward pieces? And then do a thing around his neck like so. That might be simpler. Instead of driving myself crazy. Okay. Gotta neaten up this edge. I'm going to have that like that. This one will be shorter. I can glue those two guys together. Again, to have one last thing to handle. Okay, I should probably glue that down. And I should also, maybe the tombow is quicker, I should also add just a tiny bead of glue here prevent any fraying. I don't think anything is coming out. So much for that idea. Okay, we know that art, gl art glitter glue dries clear. So I can touch this, touch the ends with this. I do have fray check, but it's by my sewing stuff, so I should be bringing that closer. I never use it there. Some people singe this with a with a ma uh, match or a lighter. Okay. right there. This is thick enough that I'm not going to worry about glue marks showing. Okay, now let's hope there's enough of this piece left to make it believable. Well, this is the neater edge, so let's seal it. And then trim the other side that is worst looking cut.
curve there. Okay, remember, measure once. No, measure twice, cut once. this edge glue this down Now, he probably bring this book back in and, whoa, and see what uh, <clears throat> I could glue the prompt on here. some ceramic tile underneath here. Yeah, that might be good. Sorry to make you guys have to watch this. Honestly, this isn't how I prefer to do things. You could leave that tan on there. up most of the blue though. So I either need to butt that up to the edge or oh, I should be gluing this shut. Yeah, cover this up, use the glue stick. I wondered why I was saving all those magazines for before we did our addition to the house. It was especially, I mean, I've always liked the core magazines. Um, but it was especially critical to get some ideas and see the trends and figure out a way to do it, you know, within budget. And um, I haven't renewed all those subscriptions, so it was... Uh, It was good that I had the magazines there when I needed them. Okay, so this would be in here like so. And by adding that paper, it also serves to reinforce that, um, that lip there. I can go like so. I can go like so. Yes. And again, that still is crooked. So 
if anyone comes and measures this with their micrometer, hopefully it's better now. If you come anywhere near me with your micrometer, I'll beat you back. Cool. Right. And see how dirty fingers, dirty gluey fingers, automatically grunge stuff up. No extra effort required. Woohoo! I see we need a little repair job here. Did you know that? Uh, Maybe other glue sticks do that too. Did you know that you who uh, they their claim to fame is that they that it's a screw top. So you know there's less chance of putting the cover on poorly and having the glue stick dry out. Honestly, everything I touch. Okay. I think, where are we at time-wise? Holy cow. Um, I think that I'm going to stop here. This uh, probably needs something more. Maybe I'll just choose to do some background stamping on this page. Again, with some shade of blue. I'll probably cut a, a notch in here. I have one of those uh, slot punches. And add some fibers, some sort of ribbon or fibers at the top. <clears throat> and um, yeah, I think that's pretty good. Um, anyway, I'm going to stop there. Remember to take part. Remember not to compare yourself to anyone else. And if I can make a necklace for a giraffe and put a scarf on a penguin, who knows what might be coming next. Uh, oh, and I promised myself I would do this at the end of each video. Just as a gentle reminder. I hope you can see it all. Anyway, thank you. See you next time. Bye-bye.